In another, another plan, it will be the same geofence as they submitted before. Uh, they're flying a very similar mission. So I think we're just we're interfacing with the IS. Exactly. Yeah. So just a little bit more as you know as they're doing this. So uh, as far as the airway GCS, you'll see it's quite different from from the other. The, ours is very customizable. So for example, this given operator does want an artificial horizon. They have it in the lower left corner. Um, there's also airspeed and altitude indicators. Um, do you actually kind of customize what information you're reading off the aircraft? So right now, this this particular operator has selected to have very small indicators. I mean, they're not as interested in that information. You can also have no indicators if it's a more autonomous flight. Um, and you're not constantly monitoring everything on the aircraft. Uh, so it looks like they've submitted the flight plan here, they've gotten their approval. Yep. Um, Visible over here now. Yep. And then also some other aspects you can see, so that green checkbox above, uh, which is the flight plan. Um, the autopilot is accepting that flight plan, but also below, the airway system will not let you take off until you have a valid geofence, which is the bottom check mark, and the one above it is a valid set of contingency plans. So. When you configure the aircraft, uh, any airware-enabled aircraft, you actually will set all the different thresholds uh, as far as what is an acceptable level of battery voltage, what is an acceptable uh, level of floss link, uh, all these different types of parameters. So for example, geofence violations and exactly how you want that air aircraft to respond autonomously once those instances may occur. So that's, what, that's those additional checkboxes that you're seeing. So now that they have a confirmed UTM flight plan, um, the aircraft has now been activated. They just confirmed takeoff. You can see the aircraft has actually taken off. And on the bottom, you'll see that uh, altitude indicator is increasing. And that bottom little blue panel has now turned, or has turned blue now, which just, just tells the operator that now the autopilot has full control. The aircraft is flying fully autonomously. If there were some sort of issue where someone were to try to fly manually, you would see that bar change to a, a different color. And any sort of contingency actions, if the battery were to be too low, or if you were getting too close to the geofence or the link had been lost, you would see that bottom bar turn red and you'd also see an alert in another area that would tell you exactly what's happened on board the aircraft and exactly what that aircraft is now going to do so that you have that understanding of, of where the aircraft's going to go, how it's going to land, um, even, though that you've, even though you've, say, lost link to that aircraft. So the aircraft now is just continuing its flight plan. It's flying that survey mission again. Um, it'll come back around and then come in and, and land just as it was uh, told to. And then again, the NASA plugin is, is open, actually displaying the live airspeed, altitude, and heading of the aircraft. Yeah, and I'm sure, obviously, Jesse and Aaron would like uh, everyone in the UAS community to use their system. But the key is that we've designed it so that anyone's system can integrate with, with, uh, with UTM. Trying to illustrate that here. So we actually invite folks to uh, engage with us in, in designing their UTM client is what we call them. As long as you adhere to the UTM client interface and you have the right approvals from us, right now that's a manual process. We get you into our system, we type it in, give you some credentials. Uh, you can design to our ICD uh, and you can have a, something working with your system as well. Yeah, so it just as a kind of plug for how simple it is, I mean, it's a very simple integration. Um, very, very easy for different types of system, whether it's airware or some other type of system. It's very simple to interface and send this information to UTM, which is actually critical for this to work because for this type of system to really scale out, everyone that's participating really has to be sharing information, not just a couple types of systems. So we need everyone in the community to really standardize the process to allow uh, all of these different types of systems that are very unique to interface with each other. Uh, you can see the aircraft now coming in for land. Um, it, went over to that last waypoint, and now it's descending. Um, you can see it again on the altitude indicator. Um, and then as soon as it touches down, it'll, it'll deactivate and turn off the motors. Awesome. So yeah, we'll see that, uh, we'll see that occur over here on the right-hand side, eventually when this guy lands. Um, when they interact with it on the Airwear GCS, we'll see it close out here in the display on the uh, iOS side. Activated still and closed. Right, so that, that interaction happens between the two systems. What we're going to show now is actually somewhat related to the question that was just asked.